Following the purchase of the Hood Centre on October 1st, 1987, one of the first things they addressed was the need for a name change. Having now Smeg and Bosch brands including oven, cooktops and hoods, as well as classic hoods and a complete range of microwaves, the name Microwave Shop was too specific. Robert came up with the name Applico Group from the words appliances and company, which became the name of the new importation and distribution side of the business. But the company needed more of its own stores to promote the brands and give them credibility. So we had the microwave shop and we had the hood centre which we bought from Kerry Harvey. And initially, this is how stupid we were, we actually changed the signage on the store so we had the microwave shop and the hood centre. So it, was, it had the, both logos up there. And we said, well, this, this just isn't right. So we employed a company, and uh, Rob and I at those times, we sat behind these glass windows, and they interviewed all these lady groups to come up with a, and show them a lot of different names. And the name that really came out was Kitchen Things. So we took those stores, and we rebranded those stores into a single name called Kitchen Things. And what that actually did is it gave us the abilities then through our own stores to be able to bring that European story. The greatest thing that the European brands did is that they actually bought to New Zealand products that they've never seen before. And it increased the opportunity for them to be able to do things that they didn't believe was possible. And, and we actually were innovative in so many areas. We bought the first fan-forced oven into New Zealand. People had never heard of fan-forced ovens. They were used to these great big boxes of ovens that really was very hard to cook on properly because it, it just didn't have the technology to be able to do it. So when we introduced these very small ovens, people looked at them and said, well, that will never work. It won't, it won't work for my family of five children. And so we had to train people actually how to use these ovens. You know, when we first bought in gas hobs, there was no such thing. So we had to bring in the gas hobs. We actually had to bring in the gas bottles and explain to people how to use gas. And of course today now gas is just massive. So lots and lots of what we did in those early days was very difficult because we had to go continually train, train, train the retail stores and the end consumers of the benefits of it. And now today, you know, with a great deal of pride, we just see so much taken for granted that uh, we, were about, you know, we were part of. Just like the European appliances, the new Kitchen Things stores were also setting a new design benchmark. The great thing about Kerry Harvey, you know, he, he was a very unique man and um, the thing that I loved was his store in Parnell where he had designed that store so unique, it was so, so stunning. And I just, uh, I just loved what he did and he was very instrumental in helping us to design the new Kitchen Things look. And we had people coming from Australia and all over to see this new look where we actually created a feeling that when you came in you were looking at the appliances in a kitchen setting. You know, even people like Kay Spencer, who's now head of the NATA group, the biggest group in Australasia, when I was talking to her recently, she was telling me how she brought customers from Australia to see kitchen things, to see the new way of how you sold appliances. And uh, we had in those stores, we had Smeg, of course, we had Bosch, we had Classic, which was a company that had manufactured range hoods for 20, 50 odd years. We also had Westinghouse, which um, was the alternative to Fish and Pike, because Fish and Pike was EDA, we couldn't sell it. But in those days, Westinghouse was a very, very strong brand in, in, in cooking. And they were the basis for what really made kitchen things take off. And uh, we were lucky enough that we had very strong associations with people in Wellington and Christchurch who had also gone down the track of selling microwaves and were facing the same problems that we had. And we actually talked them into selling uh, the Kitchen Things concept. And so that's what gave us the network for Applico to carry on importing the products and uh, doing the retail side of it. However, the news wasn't all upbeat. Difficult trading periods were a fact of life and other stores distributing Applico products were starting to see a conflict with the Kitchen Things business. We grew well enough that we started getting conflict from other retailers because we said, OK, we need more stores selling our products. And they said, well, look, you're a serious competitor to us, so we're not going to buy your products from you, Applico, knowing that you own Kitchen Things. So we ended up selling it off. And it's most probably one of the worst decisions we made because we actually lost control in the marketplace. 
The new owners launched a new concept store in Constellation Drive on the North Shore and yet again set the benchmark for appliance retailing. However, after seven years, the new owners were facing difficulties and sold the company back to Applico Group. Applico widened its distribution network, selling appliances through Retrovision, Bond & Bond, Noel Leeming, Farmers and 100% Group. When we widened our distribution, the issues we had was that most whiteware stores, or what we call an appliance store, you ended up with young people who really wanted to sell a TV or a video recorder, anything but talking to a person about buying an oven. And they just simply didn't have that expertise. Whereas in kitchen things, we knew that customers come into those stores, it was a three to six month decision making process. And we really had to work with that customer, with their designer, with that architect, to make sure that we really delivered to them the complete package. I, I find you can't replace experience. And uh, when, we, when we bring someone new into the stores, you have to do a lot of training. The enthusiasm is really important. And you know, you can show enthusiasm very quickly, but the passion comes from that deep down knowledge, knowing that what you're saying and what you believe in is actually truthful and right for the customer. So you can sit with a customer and say to them, if I was doing your kitchen, this is what I'd put in. And you give them the reasons why. And that's, that's what makes a good salesman. Today, there are 12 Kitchen Thing stores nationwide, and the company is the only retailer to sell all the leading European brands in New Zealand. We've chosen with Applico only to deal with retailers that have the knowledge and the passion to be able to sell the product. And over the years, we've got major brands in, in New Zealand here, retail brands, who have even gone to Smeg directly in Italy and demanded to be able to have their products. And we won't sell it to them because they can only sell price. They don't understand and live and breathe it like we do. So we're very, very careful. So yes, Kitchen Things represents a lot of the turnover of key brands. And it's not just our brands, it's all the key brands. Kitchen Things is a major mover of those products. And if you break it down even further, if you take a brand like Bosch, and if you look at their top end range of product, Kitchen Things is what sells it, not, not the traditional stores. And if you look at the new technology, when you look at things like pyrolytic ovens, if you look at things like induction hogs, if you look at sensor range hoods, which is all the new technology, Kitchen Things by far is the market leader in selling those products.